All right, everybody, I'd like to welcome you out to yet another one of our Connected Educator Unconference presenter interviews. Uh, today, I am really excited to introduce you to Tim Saunders. He is, well, we, we've got tons and tons of great presenters, and he is, he is one of them. Uh, let me just give you a little bit of background on what to expect this Saturday when you come to the Connected Educator Unconference. Uh, we do not want this to be a sit and get conference. We want you to be up. We want you to be active. We want you to, to be able to walk away with some ideas that you can use right away in your classroom. So just come ready to move around and Tim's, uh, Tim's session is going to be perfect for that. Now let me give you a little bit of info on or background on Tim. He is a fourth grade teacher who's in East Grand Rapids and also he's the co-founder of some pretty interesting organizations of the, the Coalition for Gainful Learning and he will explain a little bit more about that. He's also a board member on, the, the pl our, on Playful Learning president of the Kent Reading Council and a teacher consultant for the National Writing Project. So that is, that is quite the list. So Tim, welcome. We're, we're really glad that you can be here today. Well, thanks. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Saturday and I'm hoping to bring some, uh, some active experiences for whoever shows up. I, I know that is definitely what you're going to do. So here's, let, let's just get right into it. Um, you're going to be talking about the idea of gameful learning. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had 30 seconds to describe your session, how would you describe it? All right, you're going to give me 30, so I'll take uh, about three minutes here. Um, 30 seconds. The, uh, basically, anyone who comes in is going to have a chance to play. Um, we're going to have a handful of different games, and uh, some of them are going to be activities hey, and lessons. Oh, I apologize for the uh, <laughs> intercom thing there. But uh, basically, it's going to be a, a, a handful of activities, lessons, and even example from a unit-long game that I have my students do in science. So we're going to have a lot of different examples depending on people's comfort level and interest level. Well, Tim, I, I really appreciate you making this such an interactive session. Um, that's, that's really what we're looking forward to. And as I've been talking to, to Brad Wilson, who, like I mentioned to you before, just thinks the world of you, and it's, seeing it's some of the mutual, things that... Uh, Mutual Admiration Society there with Brad and I. <laughs> nice. So how would you describe this idea of gameful learning to somebody who may not have heard about it before? Right. Um, for a while now, gamification has been kind of a big buzzword in education. And it's something that I'd say gameful learning goes a little bit beyond that. It's beyond uh, maybe adding video game language or vocabulary to lessons in school and assigning points and quests and things like that and looking at games more holistically. Um, one thing I'm a big fan of is taking pre-existing games like the Zob Mondo game, Would You Rather, and finding different ways to implement that in all sorts of different subject areas. Um, I've had students play that type of Would You Rather game in, uh, in language arts. I've had some math teachers do it at the high school level that I know. Um, and that's, that's certainly gameful. Um, and that's something that uh, I want, you know, I think is a, a good, uh, good tool for the toolbox for just about any teacher. So, okay, quick story. Just the other night, uh, my kids and I, we played Would You Rather, and they just absolutely love that game. And, and as you were describing that, I kind of had my little aha moment of realizing that this isn't necessarily about technology. This is more about the, the, the concept of, right. of the game in, in the learning process. Right. Uh, um, we've, I'm really fortunate to be in East Grand Rapids where all of my students, um, I'm in a, part of a netbook pilot, and this is my fourth year of having uh, a one-to-one -one classroom, and we certainly engage in, and try to leverage that as much as we can, but Games can be way more than uh, video games or uh, apps. They can be uh, hybrids. You know, you can have a mashup of analog and digital um, components and elements, and you can do a lot of gameful things with that too. And I hope to bring an example of that for people to play when they come down, uh, when they come on Saturday. So, Tim, one of the things that I think is really important, not just for this conference, but also just teaching in, in general, is the idea of, of why. Why do you do this? And so, yeah, could you explain a little bit about why this is such an important piece of your classroom? Yeah, I think the, the biggest uh, draw for me is the engagement level. You know, when students are playing a game, it's, uh, they relax a bit, right? 
the the it's not school anymore, right? It's they're they're a little more a little more interested in taking risks, right? It's not like you if we're playing a, ma a game in math, um, it's not like a worksheet or I Excel or something like that where if they get something wrong, there's a consequence for it. You know, they're, they tend to be a little more adventurous. They tend to be higher risk takers. They tend to be more creative thinkers. Um, they tend to be more engaged. The time goes faster for them. And all of these things, I think, um, are what we want our students to, to have. And in a lot of ways, too, you know, I think some people hear games and they automatically kind of turn off from it or think, oh, well, you know, it's common core. We've, we've got to hit all these critical thinking skills. And, and I, my answer to that is perfect. You know, what can be more rigorous than watching a student uh, fail at something repeatedly and keep going and keep driving through until they uh, arrive at some measure of success? And I think that games are a really great way to teach rigor, um, and, you know, typically through engagement. Now, of course, um, you could also pose that argument of, well, you know, what about those really tough things that they have to do? Well, you know, I mean, my, my classroom isn't just games, although it's, there's certainly a lot of it, but I think that they're able to be a bit more tenacious um, when they can kind of translate that rigor skill of trying to succeed and trying to master a game um, at school to other school, you know, activities, the, the stuff that happens maybe in some of those other classrooms that we, we try to nudge people into some different, different ways of thinking or, or trying stuff. You know, Tim, I've always been fascinated by that idea of the learning cycle and, and kind of the, the looping that happens in, in games. I watch my kids play Jenga, and they'll spend forever just trying to figure out the exact how to do that. And even though it all falls down over and over again, they always put it back together and try again. And I, I love this idea of making the learning process like that. We're taking risks. We're trying something new. Isn't or is encouraged rather than discouraged because they know that it's going to be a, a process rather than a one-time shot to get something right. Right. Well, we think about it when you hand a paper back, you know, a worksheet back to a student, and they, you know they have half of them correct. Well, what's their motivation to complete that? You know, and you compare that to a, a multiplication game that Constance Cami created, something like Salute or uh, Rio, I don't know, and I'll have copies of those and examples of those on Saturday, but, um, you know, when you struggle at that, at learning your multiplication facts, as opposed to maybe like a time test or something like that, you, you know, you're having fun with your friends. You have a, a collaborative group around you. You have a, an affinity group, you know, if I, were, if I were James G and trying to make that connection, um, that's, that's really powerful. It is, and let's let's kind of switch gears a little bit and talk about your session on Saturday at the Connected mm -hmm. Educator Unconference. For the people who attend your session, what do you want them to walk away with? Ideally, I'd, I'd like them to walk away with uh, one or two games or one or two ideas that they could put into play right away when they come back to class on Monday. Um, on top of that, I'd really want them to understand the importance of debriefing, okay. which is when you finish playing the game, it's when you sit either with a group of four or five who played it, or maybe it's a whole class discussion, and you reflect on and discuss what was it that we just did. You know, I mean, there's, you can look at it from a couple different ways. You can look at it from a content or curricular level, and what did we just learn? What did we just do? And then there's the other part of it of what were some of the life skills? How did we play this game? You know, did we have to collaborate or compromise in some ways to get to a... Uh, you know, an optimum result that we play against each other. You know, I, I think that that's a very, very critical part of using games in the classroom is having that time to debrief. So Saturday, come on out. We'll, we'll play some games and we'll talk about them and then hopefully you'll leave with uh, some new ideas or something you can take back right away to your room and, uh, and implement on Monday if you're moved. <laughs> well, Tim, this, this sounds fantastic. And we're really excited that there's gonna you're gonna have 75 minutes to really let the the attendees kind of dive in this hands-on learn by doing sort of thing, so that you can have as much time as possible. What kind of things would you like teachers to either bring with them or to do before they come to your session? I think the really critical thing would be to have some type of mobile device, whether it's uh, or maybe not even a mobile device, just some type of device 
whether it's a laptop, netbook, iPad, iPhone, non-Apple product, <laughs> for those of you that have them. <laughs> um, and then uh, I think if you really want to get the maximum out of uh, an example that I'm going to bring for people to play from a unit-long uh, game that I do, I would say create a Wikispaces account. Okay. I think that would be, um, if you have that in hand, if you know, if you have a Wikispaces login, username, and password, if you have that in hand ready to go, then I'll have something really fun for you to do, uh, kind of like a unit-long science game. It'll be a lot easier for... Um, for you to get into it and have a chance to play some other stuff too if you've got that ready to go. Excellent. Well, Tim, I, I've told you once, I'll tell you, tell you a bunch of times, we are so excited to have you come down to Jackson on, on Saturday. You, you're doing some great things in your classroom, and Thanks. more than anything, we just we, we appreciate you being willing to, to share that with, with other teachers. So I'm, I'm happy to come down. This is, I'm really looking forward to it. It's, it should be a fun time. It's going to be a good day. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, hey, we will we will see you then. All right. Thanks, Dan.